Yes, Professor Adinger, if I'm coming here, you, you said what we need now is for the leadership to lead. Then we can solve the problems that have been identified. What exact, can you please break down that, that bit of the leadership leading? Leadership leading in the sense that when the problems, we know what the problems are, as I said, the leadership will lead by identifying with those problems, by being sensitive to those problems, and showing the way forward. When a leader identifies with the problems of the people, there is this empathy, and leading from there, you'll be able to get people to follow and do what is, uh, what is needful to move the nation uh, forward. We have had leadership that has not been as sensitive as they ought to be to the problems of the people. And when we do things and we do not identify with the nation, of course we cannot be talking about nationalism. We cannot be talking about development when the orientation is not development friendly. It is important that what we say, what we advocate, what our constitution requires have to be abided with. We really have to ensure that we are guided by the Constitution, we are guided by the spirit, the will of the people, and above all, the fear of God in what we are doing. That is the only way we can really build a nation. Indeed, people complain that, okay, we missed it because we are laying emphasis on things that do not sum up to developing a nation. We have to be able to create an enabling environment for people to actualize their potentials. Every Nigerian should be able to feel free to you know, uh, do whatever he has the capacity to do. But even before then, you have to make sure that that individual is built up. Development starts with the building of every individual. In other words, Prof. to give education. The building up of the individual here. Let's look at the, the, bit, the role that education should have played. I mean, post-independence. There are those who talk about the kind of educational system we had was more amenable to the times now in terms of practicality. But what is obtainable now in the educational sector is not what should be, and so that needs to be worked on. How would education play a role in changing all of this rhetoric? I will point out uh, three areas here. One is that when we look at the directive principles of state policy, uh, it is there clearly that what uh, the government will do to help the Nigerian child. But then, unless and until that provision is made justiciable, we are going nowhere. Education should be made free and compulsory, at least at the lower level, so that by the time a, school, a, a child goes through the school, the elementary and the secondary, he will have been able to develop the capacity to survive in the society. And of course, obligations that are expected of such a child will be they take it for granted because he will have known the rights and wrongs and so forth. And of course, uh, they, 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 they it will, will, will be constituting less of a danger to the nation. The second area is that apart from making it free and compulsory, by the time you leave that stage, you make education answerable to the needs of the society. In other words, we do not just educate people for the fun of it. You make our pattern of education such that when people come out, they are employable and they'll be useful, not necessarily to the society, but also to themselves. Many people should be educated to be able to use their hands, to use tools to develop themselves, to be self-employed. But you have people today who are unemployable and who are, of course, not, willing or not able because of the type of education that they get not able to use themselves and to utilize uh, you know, the inherent talents in them. The other area that I believe in the education sector is we have so many areas that need to be addressed seriously. Right now, we have proliferation of universities, institutions are developing without due regard to the needs of the society. We should be addressing the needs of the society with the type of educational institutions that we establish and the courses that are taught in those institutions and what we do because that is the only way we can develop a nation. We should be able to think of the future. We have to be proactive. We have to have a vision and of course the policies that we pursue, those institutions or 
agencies that are supposed to monitor and regulate to do their jobs properly because that has been part of the problem. We may end up having an educated population out of which more than 60, you know, 70 percent will not be useful to the society, will not be useful to the country, and that will be a disaster. We uh -huh. have to be mindful of this. And re if I can jump in, Prof, I've got to then ask, I mean, you had the opportunity to at least uh, correct or make an impact to correct some of those issues that you've highlighted. So could you tell us then, what was it that you did to say that all of these things that you've highlighted are corrected while you were Minister of Education? One of the things that was done at that time, uh, to the glory of God, and of course uh, the President uh, gave uh, as much latitude, I have as much latitude to be innovative at that time. I made sure that uh, we put this issue of uh, autonomy for the universities so that they be innovative, they be able to be on their own and not just depend on government and the regulations should be such that will be limited to certain areas, you are given the resources available, then you can go on your own, you know, to maximize the opportunities that are available. I felt at that time that there was need to give every Nigerian child education because I kept stressing over and over that the child on the streets of either Onicha or talk of Lagos could constitute problems to the children in Bauchi or Sokoto or those in Kebi could constitute problems to those in Kwara if they are not given education. And I was stressing as much as possible that, look, there was need to start to make what was required in the Constitution realistic. In other words, realistic and realizable. So that we have not just the directive principle of state policy there that oh, education shall be made available to Nigerian citizens, but that you make sure that parents are compelled to send their children to school. And those who use those children as uh, child labor and so forth are not allowed to do that. Once opportunities are given to every Nigerian child, you are giving them the key to self-development and you are liberating also the nation. Uh, educating the Nigerian child, you are educating the nation, you are liberating the nation, and you are developing the nation. And what I also tried to do at that time, which I thank God uh, for that people are now realizing uh, the essence, is that you also do not have a straitjacket. You do not have a situation in which you unify the educational system in such a way that take the universities. When there is a problem in any institution that is controlled by the federal government, you see the other universities uh, going on strike, the down tools. That should not happen. There is no way, there is no reason whatsoever for universities to be paid equally, for universities to be developed at equal pace. They should be given opportunities for them as much as possible to do what was needful, particularly when it comes to developing each to their own capacity. In other words, we should have a situation whereby uh, some universities in some parts of the country can be, you know, going into some areas that where they have relative advantage. And then at the same time, they'll be having some impact on the community, on the society around them. Again, we also have a situation in which, unfortunately, People believe that uh, vice chancellors all over the country, they should be earning the same salary. Uh, lecturers, uh, professors, they should be placed on the same salary. That will not work. In a federal system, truly federal system, you don't have that. And that is what has brought about some of people talking about restructuring and so forth. So that you have people develop at different paces. Now, universities can be paying to attract good lecturers, good professors in some universities because there is need for them to go into certain areas, particularly the technical areas, whereas some other universities too, they may not have need for such. The attraction of universities should be based on what they can offer, what they can offer the individuals that are involved there, the individuals meaning teachers, workers, and students. And in some other places, we could have people 
who, as a result of the local situation, they may not have to pay as much as are uh, being paid in some uh, city centers where the cost of living uh, is much higher and so on. That is what we get all over the world. 